YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean Austin here again from Sean's Rabbit, Chain Aquaponic Produce, and we're back with another rabbit farming video for you guys. Well, you saw the topic, so you know that today we're gonna be talking a bit about the heat, the high temperatures we've been having in recent times, and the effects that it could have on your rabbits. So, we'll be back with more right after the intro and with a more cooperative do. Okay guys, we're back. So we're gonna see if we can get some work done with this girl here. Okay. This is the only one <laughs> that we have. This phenotype. Uh, we got this dough from uh, Sunshine Rabbitry in Samoa. And we just have her here, you know, just as a, a foster mom, you know. Yeah, but she's a nice dough. Yeah, so we're talking about heat. Now, if you live in Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean for the most part, uh, in the last few months we've been having some high temperatures. And I mean, what we consider high may not necessarily be considered high in other parts of the world. But again, as long as you're looking at a difference of about four to five degrees Celsius, that makes a big difference where livestock is concerned. Okay. So our normal daily temperature would average 32, 33 around there. Right now, at least here on the farm, we're averaging 35, 36 degrees Celsius during the day. So that is a big difference to our rabbits especially. Okay, um, most of the other livestock, it's okay because they have areas where they can take a bath and things like that to stay cool, but not so with the rabbits, of course. Okay, now again, like I said, this heat affects all livestock and it tends to have a very negative effect on production. One of the first, first issues that you have with rabbits, obviously, would be heat stress. Okay, uh, heat stress could be harmful as well as deadly to rabbits. Okay. One of the first things you're going to notice with your rabbits if they're experiencing high temperatures is that you're going to see them panting a lot. 
Most times they lie down and they raise their heads up and they pant. They breathe heavily and at most times too their mouth will actually be open and you'll see them panting. That's trying to cool themselves. Okay? So it's something to look out for. You're gonna also look at you're gonna see um your rabbits are gonna be a bit lethargic. They're not really gonna to want to move around too much. They're gonna be lying still for most of the day. No, I mean it's normal for rabbits to lie still most of the day, but you will observe other things as well, especially that heavy breathing. That's one of the first signs you have to look out for to know when your rabbits are experiencing some heat stress. Okay, now I mentioned this before, but as long as you're having issues with high temperatures, you're gonna notice in a lot of cases that you're gonna have a negative effect on productivity. There are a number of things that you're gonna notice. Uh, lack of receptivity of your doors. They don't wanna lift for the buck at all. Low energy from the box. You know, in a lot of cases, you'll put the pair together, you'll bring the dough to the buck, and you'll notice they just lie there and do nothing. Okay, because if it's too hot, they just don't want to engage at all. Another issue is buck sterility. Now, to confirm this, you're gonna need to get a sample from your buck and look at it under a microscope to determine the density of sperm or if there's even the presence of sperm now in the absence of having a microscope you're gonna have to rely on your records and a bit of anecdotal data so let's look at an example if you're accustomed to breeding 10 does to the box that you have and in a lot of cases you would get between 8 and 10 does becoming pregnant but now, during this period of time, you're breeding the same 10 does and you're receiving five, six, maybe even four, or in some cases, zero conception. Then it's a safe assumption that there's an issue with the sterility of your box. Also, if you are getting conception, but your litter sizes are small, you're accustomed to getting litters six, seven, eight, nine, even, but now you're getting litters three, four, five across the board. Then you, it's safe to assume, it's not concrete evidence, but it's safe to assume that there's a sterility issue with the buck in terms of their sperm count pull extraction. Something else you may notice is the increase in the number of still births you receive okay now as long as you're interbreeding of rabbits every now and then you're gonna have a few stillborn kits but if that number has increased or is gradually increasing then you know that you definitely have an issue with the heat and that heat is causing stress on your doors we have had some instances where those have kindled nine and six out of the nine were still one. So we ended up with a litter of three. <laughs> okay, um, it's unfortunate, but these things happen sometimes. And you just have to think of ways now to try and mitigate that, to try and prevent it in the future. You may never entirely eliminate it, but you could try to reduce it. I'm going to look at that in a little bit. Also, if your rabbits are experiencing heat stress, they're not gonna eat as much. So you may observe when you come to feed them the following day that in most cases, they still have feed in their feed pans as opposed to days when they would normally consume all of their feed. So that's usually a good sign to look at. But whenever you see feed remaining in cases where they usually eat all it's imperative that you check their drinking water uh, because if rabbits don't have water they're not going to eat as well so you need to rule out as many factors as you can so immediately check their water as long as they have sufficient drinking water 
then it could be attributed to the heat why they're not eating as much now this also leads to other things because if they're not eating as much then you may see some weight loss in some of the doughs and that too is going to affect your productivity because if your doughs aren't well conditioned they won't breed well okay so that's something else you need to look for now let's look at some ways to try and mitigate this heat now in the wild rabbits to avoid high temperatures you know in, well first of all in the wild rabbits live mostly underground they build tunnels and burrows and things like that so they have a means of avoiding the direct sunlight and the ambient temperatures around so they tend to stay cooler in that way now in a commercial setup where you have rabbits in cages they don't have that option so everything is on you to try and keep them as cool as you can so if you're just getting started then you might want to consider the location and the orientation of your rabbit tree if you can set up your rabbit tree in areas that are shaded that would be a bonus for you and try as much as possible to orient your rabbit tree I mean and face it in a direction that it would capitalize on the natural airflow to keep it cool if your rabbit tree is already built then your options are a bit limited you would then have to look at creating airflow so you may have to install some fans to get the air moving throughout your rabbit tree you could also look at raising the height of your roof and or installing heat shield you know to keep that heat from radiating off of the aluminum sheets down onto your rabbits i mentioned this before but it's really important that your rabbits always have a readily available source of clean drinking water okay because consuming water is one of the ways that rabbits can cool themselves so they need to have a lot of clean drinking water those are stressing clean okay so clean drinking water to help them regulate body temperature i've seen instances on on youtube especially where in some countries people use frozen water bottles that they place in the cages so the rabbits can lie on it and lean on it to cool themselves okay this is also a decent option um but it's a bit limited though uh, i think it would work best if you're on a smaller scale uh, if you're on a commercial scale and you have anywhere in the range of 100 to 200 rabbits uh, It will be a bit difficult to have that many bottles frozen to be in and out of cages all the time So that, that may be an option that's more suited to the small scale farmers One of the best options that I've seen but maybe a bit costly is the installation of evaporative cooling systems okay um in some parts of the world they call them swamp coolers uh it's very similar to an air condition unit except that it uh, uses water to cool the air that passes through it um if you're not familiar with it uh no. Now you may have seen them before and not know what they are but here in Trinidad and Tobago they're used predominantly on commercial chicken farms so if you're passing near to any commercial chicken farm you're always gonna see on one side or one end something that looks like a wall made out of a type of brown cardboard looking material and you've always wondered what is this thing on the chicken pen that in most cases is the evaporative cooler so the air that passes through that membrane passes through a stream of water that's running down and you have extractor fans on the far end that draws the hot air out and fresh air through the cooling unit to cool it now i 
have seen them in action here because we have a lot of chicken farms in and around there's one right next door to me in fact i've been inside of those pens while it's in operation and i can tell you it's a lot cooler inside the pen than outside okay um, i spoke to one of the guys there and they told me that there are a number of varying factors depending on uh, the heat of the day humidity different things but on average they can reduce the temperature inside those pens anywhere between 5 and 11 degrees celsius now that's huge okay so if if i could reduce my temperature here by five degrees it would be awesome so that is an option even though a bit pricey a good option to consider uh personally we are looking at doing something like that here uh not for the entire rabbit tree right now but for starters we're going to focus on a small room just to house or box to ensure that they don't encounter any sterility because of the heat i already have an area earmarked i have to discuss it further with the other sean put our heads together and then we will activate that plan don't worry the entire process will be videoed and presented here for you guys so anyone else who wants to try it you can try it as well okay guys so we spoke a lot about the heat the effect it have on your rabbits uh the effect on production as far as breeding is concerned uh you have a few limited options okay um in cases like ours we have chosen to mostly do artificial insemination uh in this case one of the biggest benefits of doing artificial insemination is that we can identify right away the box that are either sterile or that are experiencing a low sperm count and that that is one of the biggest benefits to me so you don't waste your time thinking that your dough is bred and waiting a month for litter or two weeks to palpate to find out that no conception happened because the buck is sterile okay um other than that uh your options for breeding would be to try and switch to the cooler hours of the day so probably try breeding at nights when hopefully it's a lot cooler even though some of the nights are a bit humid as well yeah but switch to the cooler hours of the day very early in the morning and late at evening after the sun has gone down and hopefully you get a decent drop in temperature and better receptivity from your rabbits so guys i'm gonna leave it there for today i hope you found this information useful if you did share it let someone else benefit from it don't forget to hit the like button and if it's your first time dropping here with us please subscribe to our channel and help us to hit our goal of 10,000 subscribers so guys thanks for tuning in look forward to seeing you guys next week please god when we bring you a brand new rabbit farming video sean austin sean's rabbit and aquaponic produce and we are for my business partner sean mcleese thanks for watching peace